I, I feel like the soundboard should be closer to me now because we don't have a date. <laughs> no, I feel we can make this happen. Fine. All right. Uh, I, I'm going to be, be shouting more uh, soundboard commands. <laughs> I'll just take from my Dungeon Master experience and pretend like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Feeling my emotions. Jesus, I'm so fucking hot. Today. You just have this tendency to be like, fine, fine, fine. Ah! Yeah, and then an idea gets into your head. And then suddenly... Light bulb. Loud wow. nervous tension. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 231 of the Camcast. Yay! Wee. There we go. That's the enthusiasm <laughs> I come to expect from this, from this basement. Uh, the podcast that is celebrating one year of Zach being here, annoying Stop. the shit out of you. Hey. <laughs> yep. Uh, despite... can, can you give me a yeet right there? Yeet? Hey. <laughs> uh, despite your best efforts, he's stuck around. I, I, I am the, the Marco Polo of yeet. I have brought you the yeet. <laughs> yes, you have. <laughs> Traveled long and far <laughs> to bring us the yeet. You're uh, welcome. I am Mike, dear leader, doc taste, leader of men, wearing shorts even though it was barely 60 some odd degrees today. Eh. And helps that I'm a big fat guy. It was, it was good weather today. Anyway, and I am joined, uh, normally I'm joined by Dave, but he's gone. It's girlfriend's birthday, so, you know, he's got other things Fine, to do. Fine, whatever. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, somebody can actually call him daddy and not break, up <laughs> la- break out laughing immediately afterward. <laughs> that was awkward and tensionous. Yep. Uh, anyway, it is the good Colonel Eddie Dean himself, the man who, when he dabs, it looks like you're throwing a football at a nerd in a movie. There you go, limp wristed and everything. The Lord of the Board, Zach Lords. Nice to eat you all. a boy. And tonight we are joined by not one, but two special guests. Two special guests who it helps that they're also giving us money. Uh, it is Ben Allred. Oh yeah, I am giving you money. Yes, yeah. you are. I'll, I'll be your temp daddy for the day. <laughs> Ooh, wow. Oh, God. Oh. That doesn't sit well. Ben Temp Daddy Allred. That just <laughs> makes me feel bad. I just want to lay down and cry right now. Uh, <laughs> and down at the other end. Yeah, we're just moving on. Yep. Hi, Ayrton. Hey, guys. How you doing, buddy? I'm here, finally. Fi- yes, finally. We've got many things to yeah. discuss, but later. We'll get to those in a minute. We're, we're, we're glad you guys are here. Yes, we are. It's weird seeing faces that look kind of like Dave in Dave's seat, but that isn't Dave. Like it, it has the same resemblance. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, for sure. And you're wearing a cam shirt, which Dave wears <laughs> like, regularly. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I figured some some pandering wouldn't help get the classic cam shirt going on oh, here. Yeah. We appreciate that. All right, it works out. Temp daddy. <laughs> <laughs> I really leaned into it. I like it. Anyway, go ahead and follow us on all the social medias. We are at Cam Automag on the lot of them. <laughs> go ahead and get this podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play. Like, rate, review, subscribe. Force your friends to listen. They'll learn to love us. That's how it works. Hey, so if I want more of Cam and sooner... <laughs> I don't know why you would, but go ahead. Where can I, where can I achieve that in... Prosper in my more cam. I mean, for the low, low price of five dollars a month on Patreon dot com slash Cam Auto Mag, we'll go ahead and give you more cam and early cam. They're only going to get worse from here, Mike. What? <laughs> my segues. Oh God. Uh, yes, if you want a cam early, <laughs> Patreon dot com slash Cam Auto Mag. We'll go ahead and take anything from a dollar up to fifteen grand, but five dollars is the best bang for your buck because it gets you into the cam shenanigans. Super secret, but apparently not secret anymore because Facebook got rid of secret groups or something. I don't know. No. Whatever. It's a private group where we do nothing but shitpost and people lurk, and it's fun and delightful. And we usually make fun of somebody or just straight up ignore somebody, like Jackson. <laughs> I like Jackson and Sam. My friends are like the outskirts of the friend group there. <laughs> They're, like, some, they're somehow just hanging on. I don't quite get it. I, I kind of want Sam to come on as like a winter episode. Like, yeah, he'd we, be insightful. Yeah, I mean, let's... He'd be way better than Jackson. <laughs> but he's going to say yeet and boy a whole bunch more than I ever would. Does he understand that we're going to throw things at him? Oh, yeah. 100%. Okay, good. Yeah. Good. Does he understand we're going to throw hard things at him, like an empty liquor bottle? Uh, he's pretty good at dodging stuff, I think. <laughs> Everybody thinks that until it's time to dodge. Dodgeball! Anyway, yes, patreon.com slash camautomag. So, Zach, what have you been up to lately? Oh, I've done nothing uh, the past three weeks of my life. I've been <laughs> absolutely bone-boring. Perfect, wonderful, moving <laughs> no, on. fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I got my Subaru running. Yay! Uh, five months and eleven days. But who's counting? I am. I, I, <laughs> I used to uh, paint pen to market on the hood. Um, but yeah, I just like. Fit- a- it's like a prisoner in some Eastern European prison, <laughs> just <laughs> scratching it out. But yeah, no, um, I slept into it a couple weeks ago, and then this weekend I got the last little tidbits all tidied up and had it running on Friday, but didn't drive it due to a, a weird wiring issue. Yeah, I, I wasn't getting 12 volts to the uh, injector rail. Hmm. And so I did the sketchiest thing ever, and I jumped a wire from the 12 volt key. <laughs> Okay. Into the injector rail on the ECU. All right. And it worked. So, like, this ghetto-ass wire just, like, wrapped between all of my dash. I mean, listen, if it were anything else, it would be weird. Yeah. But, yeah, and then I drove it on Friday, and it's an app, and I drove it on Saturday, and it was an absolute blast. Uh, it's way faster than I thought it was going to be. Like, it's like WRX fast. Ooh. All right. Um. And, yeah, I'm stoked. Uh, I have a buddy who's wanting to do... He was going to do a WRX swap in his third-gen Legacy. And after he drove my swapped one with a flat 16, he goes, No, uh, no, no. This is, this is better. This there is better. you go. Yeah. So I might be helping out, complete some more swaps in the future, giving some wisdom, because I've learned a couple things. Right. Like, yeah, I've learned a couple things. Well, there we go. All right. Well, we don't know... You two have never been on here, so we can't say what have you been up to lately. So how about you just introduce yourselves? Let us know who you are and what you're about. Well, uh, a lot of you guys know me as Benjamin Allred. I have uh, that cool little badass 720 Dually. Damn right you do. I uh, spent the last two months patiently waiting through the uh, best riding weather of Utah for a title for a motorcycle I (laughs) picked up, traded for an old C20 Chevy I had in my backyard <laughs> guy uh, was apparently not the last one on the title. Oh, and, uh, yay. and so, yeah, you're like, oh, hey, that's fun. I'm going to go fill out some paperwork and pray that the original owners don't want it back. That's great. But it runs. Uh, it needs a few parts, but uh, it should be all fixed up within the week. And nice. Finally get on the road just in time for it to get cold. There you go. As you do. Timing is everything. And that's Utah. Yep. You got about a two week window and you're good to go. <laughs> All right. Ayrton, down there at the end of the table. Hey, buddy. Yeah, most yeah. people probably have seen me at the track, the little kid running around with the million go-karts everywhere in front Who of his you? shop. Who are you? Actually, we have met way before that time. You came into K1. Were you at K1? <laughs> I, worked you at, K- I worked at K1. When? Uh, when you, you guys' whole group came in. The UK, like all yeah. the Carters? Yeah, and you, you guys raced and stuff. Oh, I'm so sorry. You, you guys were awesome. You don't and have to we, apologize to him. <laughs> well, you guys versus like the drunk crowd on Friday night is way better. And ha- watching you guys actually race was actually cool because like, it was like how we race. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I like that because like, you guys actually let us race and let us do our thing and know that we're going to be aggressive but not yeah. trash things. Because yeah, you're the only group I've ever seen we have let do a group start because normally we separate everyone so they don't do dumb things. Yeah, I worked at K1, for those who don't know. We just did that for my birthday two weeks ago, actually. We all went oh. down there and went and raced around. And I, I, need, to, I need to go back because I, I quit in kind of a huff, and I, <laughs> I want to go back and try to actually set a lap record now there, or a, a track monthly record. Just there you go. Show them. Yeah. <laughs> I've gone karting twice. The first time I went karting, I ended up going to a chiropractor for three months afterwards because I kinked my neck pretty bad. So. Yeah, fun stuff. Not fun stuff. All right. Like excruciating pain stuff. Oh, ton, tons of fun. Oh, yeah. Try to keep thinking it's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> it it's a mental game. Exactly. All right. Well, Ayrton, anything else you want to throw out there? Uh, That's about it. That's kind of what you get in a nutshell. All right. I've been starting to do more stuff with the cars recently and driving. And before that, past couple of years, you've been finding me at whatever shops will let me hang around long enough to let me work on stuff. Thanks. So. Perfect. It's what we like to hear. Just, you can stay. Just don't screw anything up. Okie dokie. <laughs> uh, oh, well, is that the motto with me? Pretty much. Oh, God. Hey, man. It's kind of the motto with everybody. Oh. All right. Moving on. Uh, thank you to uh, our guest last week, Spider. He is now a patron. Woo-hoo. Yep. He's also going to be coming back next week. Look so. forward to that, yep. seeing him. Yep, so we're actually going to have him on an episode where we do a whole lot of more nonsensical things instead of trying to get him to talk about news and such. Yeah. So, 
There we go. And we've got a bunch of birthdays to get to. Happy birthday to the following people who may or may not ever hear this. It's a thought that counts. Exactly. If you ever wonder why I don't wish anybody happy birthday on Facebook, this is why. <laughs> Gotta listen. <laughs> anyway, happy birthday. Self-promotion. Bir- <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> Uh, happy birthday to Brad Pitts, Lance Cleverly, Dennis Niedrick, Chris Carlin, Jackson Brundage, who sold the Fozzie, so therefore he's never going to come on this podcast. Oh, I'm sorry, Jackson, you knew the rules. You get that thing to a drift event, you slide it and you'd come on, but now, no. We have faith in you. Mister, I've got a Mark Six GTI, because, <laughs> man, <laughs> I remember my time with that. It was the worst year of my life. I almost bought a Mark Seven. Don't let Bruno hear any of this. Oh, Bruno knows my feelings. <laughs> was it Mark Seven I almost bought? Twenty fifteen? Is that a seven? That's a seven. Yeah, okay, yeah. So, uh, I'm glad I didn't. Yeah. Well, no, seven. Mark Six was the one with the problems. Well, but it's still a, a two door tiny hatchback. Surprising amount of room. But, but me. <laughs> yeah, but like there's, there's room. Okay. It would have been, could have made it work. I'll let you keep going with this. Anyway, uh, happy birthday to Kirill, OG homie from way back in the day. I've known him since middle school. That's what's way back. Yeah, that is way, way back. Uh, Sarah Burgess, Hadlock, Jerry, Wade, and Jamal. Wow, that's a, like a decent chunk of the Drift community out there. Yeah. Also, happy birthday to Jamal. Shout out to him. I want to see him again. I can't wait to... We're going to see him in Vegas. I know. I look forward to it. It's going to be awesome. My my drunken memories with him are amazing. Oh, they're going to be great. We're, we're, no, we're from the, the track. We're going to forge more. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> we need to get we need to get Hadlock on here just to tell horrifying stories because that's what he does. Yeah, he's good at it. Yep. And we just need Jerry back because, well, it's Jerry. Yeah, because he came on about, about three weeks before I came on. Yeah. We're seeing the photo of him sitting right there with the no shirt on. Yep. Jerry, as soon as he got down to the basement, just whipped the shirt off. Just because he could. Yep, because Jerry. Yep. A good man. Indeed. So, I it's getting cold. Yes, it is. And I don't like buying clothes. <laughs> Who does? Because I go to the store and like, I don't want to try anything on because it feels weird. So, is there a way I can get uh, styling, styling, stylish clothes shipped directly to me with my favorite uh, podcast logo printed all over them? Yes, there is. But you can also get stuff from us. <laughs> camautoswag.com is where you go. I was lining it up for you, but nope. <laughs> oh, you lined it up for me. I just did something completely different. Thanks. You were expecting me to go up there with a baseball bat. There I am with a frying pan. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, you bet. <laughs> anyway, camautoswag.com is where you go to get all your official Cam Auto Mag merchandise. Right now, it is indeed getting cold. Zach is not wrong about that. <laughs> what? My- My doors were frozen shut on the mini minivan today, so that was a fun five-minute struggle. That's an issue. (laughs) It's a problem. Anyway, so what I recommend to you is you get the long-sleeve KMT, you get the cam hoodie. It's a zip-up hoodie. It's got the new logo on it. It's quite delightful. Get yourself a beanie. I mean, listen, it's hard to rock the hoodie up with the pom-pom on there, but if you want to, I recommend it. Pom-poms, you can get two-tone. Get all those things. Get yourself a tote bag. Shove everything in there so when you're not wearing it, you get cold weather cure- kit right there. So, yeah, go grab all that stuff. Support your favorite podcast and then us over at camautoswag.com. All right, Zach. <laughs> we have news. Hey, we have a button for this news. Yes, we do. It's good news. There's a report on TV with some very bad news. Yeah. So, so can I make some just generic p- pandering guesses to what's going on? <laughs> Please do. Okay. The title in the... Well, hold on. Was oh. I, I mean, looking at the titles, or the, did Elon tweet something stupid? <laughs> and then, Always. And then did Elon, or did uh, a, one of his companies produce something that didn't work as expected on the first try? I mean, you're talking about pretty much any day that ends in Y for Elon. Cool. Okay, let's see where we're at. Okay, so Elon Musk and Tesla have run afoul of the National Labor Relations Act. Oh, God, what? Yeah, so this is a thing. Like, every like every employee everywhere, you have the right to form a union, and your bosses can Unless you're Amazon employee. I mean, they have the right to just... <laughs> Regardless of whether or not fucking weird-ass Bezos yeah. wants them to. So they can form a union, and your bosses can't really do anything to mess with that. 
you know, actually like getting out there 30 style and busting heads or, you know, thinly veiled things like uh, Elon tweeting that, you know, in his, let's read the tweet. Let's go. Because like, like I, I've looked into like the, the whole Amazon unionizing things like there are not me. I don't know. So no. the, the, there are like very, very Oops. like just, just put, put, the, put it on. There. I, I don't think it was mine. <laughs> <laughs> so I did. Mine's on silent. Oh, there you go. I silent that shit. That a boy. Because yeah, I know there's those like like bosses Perfect. can say some things about you, but it's like really, really like guided stuff. It's like like yeah, it's weird. Yeah. So this is what Elon tweeted. Casey out. did it actually. That was Casey. Oh, Casey. Damn it. <laughs> Let me get him and Prima back on. Yeah, I want to see Casey again. I also go to see a shop. Yeah, we need to go. We need to go do that anyway. Uh, nothing stopping Tesla team at our car plant from voting union could do so tomorrow if they wanted, but why pay union dues and give up stock options for nothing? Our safety record is two times better than when plant was UAW and everybody already gets health care. Wow. Yeah. That is not things you can say. Yeah. You can't say like, and give up stock options. Yeah. Like, that's the problem. Yeah. No. Like if he, if he just left out the stock options thing, he would have been fine, but no. So now he has to sit Elon has to sit in an actual meeting where people are going to tell the Tesla employees that, hey, you can form a union, and if they try to do anything like take away stock options or whatever as retaliation, that's illegal, and then a lot of you can sue. So, there you go. Elon not understanding how the world works. I realize this is not quite Tesla news, but did you watch any of the um, Boca Vista, whatever the fuck it's called? Boca Vista was the thing from Seinfeld, but you know, the the whole uh, SpaceX Unveiling? Uh-uh. Oh, God. It, it, it was, like, ultra Elon. Like, like there's a full <laughs> clip of him, like... Elon goes as big as his life. Like, there's a whole clip of him, like, him trying to describe <laughs> his rocket re-entering. As there's a screen, four feet from him, to him, that if he would have clicked the button, would have showed the... Because, like, he's like, yeah, it's like it's going to come down like this, but, it, but it's more like this, but it, it goes sideways, and then the fins come out, and then, like, someone's like... Click the slide, click the slide, and he's like, "Oh, click the slide," and like it plays the exact same thing he was describing. Oh, yeah, it was amazing. It was golden. It was full Elon. Somewhere off stage, you could just hear somebody hitting themselves in the head with a clipboard repeatedly. <laughs> just well, speaking of Elon not figuring things out, can't really pin, pin this one on him, but this is a Tesla problem. Yeah. So they came out with their version ten software update. Some of the things you can do is now you can play Cuphead, which is an incredibly infuriating game. And you can watch Netflix while your Tesla is parked. Yep. It also has this thing called Smart Summon, which allows you to summon your Tesla, and it will come to you. Yep. It's a line of sight thing, and you got to be ready to stop it. You have to hold a button yep. in the app, and it'll come to you. However, Smart Summon isn't going so, <laughs> isn't going so hot. <laughs> yeah. So... I think I think it only is limited to like two or three miles an hour. It's like for parking lots only type shit. Oh yeah, but you know, still a four thousand pound vehicle moving at three miles an hour is a lot. That'll still fuck some shit up. So first, uh, the images that they use to uh, show you smart summon clearly show a Tesla going the wrong way down a what is very clearly one way <laughs> row. All the cars are parked one way, which indicates there's only one way to get in there. But then yep. somebody pointed out, well, it looks like it's one way, but it's actually two way because it's at <laughs> Tesla's facility. You know, that's the most Tesla thing ever is to like find a Google Earth photo of. The... Yeah, it's. it's I your... want to know when one of these eventually hits something, who's going to be liable for that? Oh, that's already happened. Well, Luke. don't worry. Yep, <laughs> <laughs> we're already oh, there. No. Somebody summons their Tesla, and because people in parking lots are terrible, somebody backs out. The Tesla doesn't... Wait, wait, I didn't see it. Oh, here we go. Here's from here's from the Tesla. Lexus. Reverse lights on. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> to be fair, that Lexus should have been watching. That should have been, but also if somebody were driving the Tesla... They probably would have seen... stopped it, yeah. Exactly. I don't know. I've seen enough car crash videos where, like... People people are retarded. They'll just don't, run into each other regardless. Don't worry. We're going to watch a car crash video that's going to make you feel a lot better about the world. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, so this one uh, from somebody on Twitter. Be forewarned at Tesla at Elon Musk. Enhanced summon isn't safe or production ready. Tried in my empty driveway. Car went forward and then ran into the side of the garage. 
love the car, but sat it, and there's a big ass <laughs> dent. Um, so, so Tesla will has been sending me repeat of Snapchats because he gets beta software for these kind of things for his vehicles. Um, and like, I, I got Snapchats about three, four days ago. I'm like, I'm watching YouTube in my car well parked. And um, he, uh, apparently, there's some new um, functionality with with the, the the sonar GPS, whatever the fuck they're using right now, the, the camera system. Yeah. And so you can actually. Um, on the view of it, because it shows you where the cars are around you, you can now zoom out and like zoom around of that and like see where the cars are like, behind huh. you and stuff. It's pretty cool stuff. No, <laughs> I thought they weaponized the sonar in there. Just finally, just Elon going full on super villain. Well, just... we're about ready to get cold boosted rocket engines, and we just <laughs> we just really need him to go full on Hank Scorpio and just take over the Eastern Seaboard. <laughs> that is a reference for <laughs> for a couple people out there. There you go. Uh, nah, well, yeah. It doesn't do it. Just sits Perfect. There. And then finally, my favorite of these videos. So here is a dude standing. He looks like, a, like the exact Tesla owner I would imagine. Yep. So he is summoning his Model 3 from across the parking lot where there is an entryway between him and his Tesla. Yeah, it's already And like... a consistent flow of traffic. Oh, is he going to hit that car? Yep, he's going to hit that car. That Mercedes, what is that? That thing was moving. It's an Acura. So, yeah, that's, I mean, this is one of those things. Granted, uh, the Tesla, sh- if it was driver's would have stopped and checked traffic before moving on. Yeah. Like, that's the problem. Like, when you are summoning your very expensive RC car, you're focused on your RC car. No. You're not looking at everything around it. Really, that's all we need is a common sense update. I mean, that would be great. <laughs> but these people are... It's just not going to take. <laughs> just going to blue screen a whole bunch of people. Uh, so there we go. Yeah, we're, uh, as far as the... Uh, uh, I was 100% right. There was a tweet and yep. some random bullshit that Tesla d- um, dropped. Yep. It didn't work right. Exactly. There you go. Congratulations, Zach. You've earned yourself another mics. Thanks. You're welcome. So I'm saving it for the sake. There you go. All righty. Well, moving on into the land of British luxury... The next Jag F-Type could be powered by a BMW V8. Why? Well, so, here's the thing. I mean, this is, like, the V8 in the F-Type is amazing. It makes me feel things in my pants when I hear it. It's one of the best-sounding V8s on the market right now. Oh, I, I'd go ahead and say it's probably the best-sounding V8. You can go ahead and fight me on that. This is the hill I'm going to die on. When you use these, sounds better. Okay. <laughs> I mean... I'll stop right there. <laughs> you, you go right ahead and you hang out with that boat anchor. Fuck you. <laughs> hey, hey, Mike. Huh? Fuck you. There you go. I'm learning. Put some force behind it, damn it. Anyway, so... Hey, hey do you need a koozie for your phone? I thought the cords were going to help me out, but it's okay. I'll go ahead and just uh, stick it in the big... <laughs> Mine's in my hand, so it doesn't make sounds. Let me just make sure that's nothing. Oh, my brother's uh, brother's coaching high school football in Colorado. Oh, uh, they lost fifty three to six. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not not ideal. Hey, you gotta start somewhere. Tell him he should start coaching. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, man, he's a special teams coach. I keep telling him to run like fake punts and stuff, but apparently that's not in the playbook. Is the whole team special? Oh, damn. I mean, it is Western Colorado, so I'm hands <clears throat> off on this one. It's neither here nor there. Anyway. Back to what we're talking about. Um, yeah, so much like Aston Martin, in an effort to make things just easier for them, is going to be sourcing their engines from AMG, getting those sweet twin-turbo V8s. Uh, Which hurts me. I mean, listen, man. They're still going to be doing their V12s, but, you know, the, the run-of-the-mill, the average, the plebeian yeah. Aston Martin. Yeah. However much you can associate those two words together. Yeah. Anyway, so, yeah, so the rumor is that uh, Jaguar Land Rover is going to be getting their engines from BMW, specifically that 4.4-liter twin-turbo V8 that is featured in the M8 competition. I think that produces 616 horsepower, and I did the math earlier, over 500 pound-feet of torque. So, damn. Yeah, 
So that's quite a bit more than the, you know, 490 that the F-Type does. So, yeah. I mean, it's going to be... You're going to be getting more power and more motor, but at the cost of it sounding cool. So, I don't know. This is... At least it won't sound like a G35. That's true. It's very true. And you know what? I'm here for this proxy war. I want to see Aston and Jag go at it. And by proxy, Mercedes and BMW go at it. So that's that's what we're here for. Yeah. Yep. I'll be I'll make some popcorn. There you go. That's what that's what we're gonna do. Just hang out and have some popcorn and listen to some engines that used to sound cool. <laughs> Back in my day, Aston Martins had Aston Martin engines. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> back in your day, they had Ford engines. Do you know what? Fuck off. <laughs> I know we literally discussed this like 25 minutes ago. Yes, we did. <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> uh, they had Ford engines and Volvo nav systems. <laughs> yes, they did. <laughs> and just nightmares. Yeah. The rest of it was nightmares. A- at least at least they didn't have the, the Volvo um, touch dial phone infotainment hey, man. stack. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> the four knobs and the phone in the middle. The, key, the keypad. <laughs> the keypad. I want to star 69 that song real quick. Hold on. <laughs> what was that? Uh, uh, there we go. So I'm also broke. Yes, you are. <laughs> and I'm steadily broke. God. Wow. <laughs> Land the plane, Zach. Where can I get shit close? <laughs> I'm going to... Okay, so for those asking Zach, I want to know where you can get cheap clothes, and I'm not going to tell you where you can get cheap clothes. You can get affordable, quality. yes, quality, affordable clothing from our friends over at SteadyBroke.com. They are Steady.Broke on all of the social Don't medias. Don't me like that. <laughs> I, lo- I love that you tried, and I never want you to stop. <laughs> but fucking stop. No, don't. It's delightful. Uh, we may have you do all the transitions for this up until you get good, and then we're going to have to bring in some other incompetent rube. I'm steady and broke at the same time. <laughs> fuck, what the fuck was that? <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> and this is what Tommy isn't paying for. So, uh, You're welcome, yeah. Tommy. There you go. So, yes, uh, head over to SteadyBroke.com. Check out some of their fun stuff they've got. Get yourself a long sleeve Broke State University t-shirt. Get yourself a hoodie. Probably get yourself a hat, too, because you got to round it out. You know, and I heard there's a uh, coupon code. Oh, you heard right. Put all that stuff in your cart. Enter Cam Auto 15 at checkout. <gasps> that saves 15 percent on your entire order. Like that's like a couple dollars off a hoodie. Yeah, I mean that hoodie's like 35 bucks. It brings it closer to uh, 28 bucks. Yeah, it's not bad. It's 15 yeah. percent less broke. Yeah. Damn right. I, I, I can. That's ramen money right there, baby. <laughs> Just because you're broke doesn't mean you can't live your dreams. <laughs> Steady broke. <laughs> you good? Yeah, I need a minute. Okay, you, ta- you take a minute. Uh, Ayrton, you want to step up to the plate for this one? <laughs> huh? Step up for the bat? Something oh, no. else that's broke. <laughs> oh, uh, the relationship. Sebastian Vettel. <laughs> the relationship at Ferrari. Wait, oh, yeah. the podiums are in front of the right cars this time? Uh, there he is. In front of the, the, the Canadian GP. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Look yep. how happy he is. He thought he was never going to win a race again. Ah, uh, but there he is, Lewis Hamilton, being the benefit of Sebastian Vettel's MGUK dying and him. So apparently if he if the car like started showing those issues 100 meters later, they could have made it to the pits, and they, you know safety car would not have been deployed. <laughs> but because of where it was, they had to stop him. Because apparently these electrical issues could have literally shocked Seb. <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool. Yep. So, um... See, like, I, I, I'm, i like, not the voice of reason here at all. But, like, I feel like like they, these teams need to be more hands-off. Like, because, like, what was it a couple races ago that they had the, the DRS unit fail? And they're like, well, if you open it again, it might stay open. <laughs> that was earlier this season, yes. Yeah, and I just want, like... <laughs> that was I'm amazing. Just, I'm just, like, being like, let that happen. Like, let someone go run amok with an open DRS. Like, that'd be awesome. The but, problem with that they're is... They're going to bin it. Yeah, it is, like... That's what caused... Oh, who, I feel like it was one of the alphas, but that was caused the, the practice alphas. crash in Monza this year. Yeah. But that's better or, racing. It's like what we're going to talk about next. 
It's like NASCAR shit. I mean, okay, it's it's more dangerous, but more dangerous does not necessarily equal more better. That's well, that's where you're wrong. <laughs> well, all right, I'm gonna hear. I, I will stand on this hill all day, every day. <laughs> all right, I'm just gonna. All right, this is the hill I'll die on anyway. Ayrton, did you catch any of the race? I've only seen the highlights for this one. I didn't get a chance to this weekend, unfortunately. Same here. I slept in and didn't watch the race. From what I did see, though, I really think it would have been interesting to see what would have happened if Vettel hadn't broken down and how they were going to handle that, because I don't think he was very keen on the idea of relinquishing a win. Oh, he was absolutely not happy. He, like that idea, That was not going to happen. Have you seen that that clip when he 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 pulls it he pulls it off to the side? It's broken down, yeah. and he's just uh, like, "Bring back the fucking V12s." Yeah, <laughs> which is great because he never raced one of the V12 cars, <laughs> so he's cl- he's nostalgic for an era he never took part in. Hey, that's that's fine because look at me. <laughs> yes, look at you. I'm a rolling example for that. Yeah, that is very true. I uh, want my Ford engines back in my. <laughs> <laughs> New Jaguar. You want your Ford engines back in your Jags and your Volvo touchscreen navs that never I want worked. My V8 Mondeo back. Yes. Don't argue with me. I know what I want. There we go. Let's start throwing Mitsubishi motors back in Chrysler's as well. Yeah. I also want to note the fact how just piercing Max looks at that photo right there. Yeah. This... <laughs> just... Fuck. Yeah, like Max looks like he's going to hurt you. <laughs> like. I mean, he can try. He's much like every Formula One driver. I imagine he's adorably tiny. But he looks angry. <coughs> Don't fuck with Max. <laughs> no, I've seen what he can do. It's the little angry people you have to worry about. You remember when he went up? And slapped, <laughs> you remember what happened last year when he went up and slapped Esteban Ocon? That was a great moment. <laughs> Truly a highlight. Uh, anyway, so yeah, Leclerc started on pole at. Um, the Sochi Autodrome, which uh, I might remind you, uh, Sochi is a Russian summer resort that for some odd reason held the Winter Olympics one time. Yeah, that was weird. You know. They had to, they had to bring in snow. <laughs> they had to truck in snow, literally. So <laughs> Only in Russia. Yep, this is... Here, we bring snow to you. Yep, yeah, damn right. <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, Leclerc was on pole. Seb started third. Uh, Seb, at the you know, at the start... Uh, Seb moved over, covered Lewis, but then got a hell of a toe from Leclerc and then passed him. That's one of the best starts that I've seen in this grid for a while. It was great. And then they wanted to give Leclerc the preferred strategy. And for that to work, he had to be ahead of Sebastian. But Sebastian kept saying, we'll have him get closer. Which is He's too far behind. I can't let him by. (laughs) He had a four-second gap. And everybody was like, please, Sebastian, just let him by this next lap, please. It was it was kind of painful to watch. So here's where the conspiracy theories start about Ferrari broke the car on purpose. Oh, man, that's, I mean, it's a very dangerous way to do that. You could literally shock the guy you're paying a lot of money. That's That's a problem. I mean, you know, we're not talking like Nelson PK having an accident level stuff but yeah so there we go that was that happened your po- your uh, podium was lewis who i mean let's let's be perfectly honest he kind of lucked into this one because the ferraris were going to drag those mercedes around the track it was just that's just how it was going to be but, i do think it would have been really interesting to see though how that would have ended up if Vettel would have given that spot back or not, because that would have given really good insight into the internal politics of the team right now. Oh, well, cause... oh, there was no way Seb was going to give that I back. Can't, I can't imagine he's really feeling he's got much to lose right now. Yeah, he's <laughs> he's playing house money right now. And here's the other thing. I watched an autosport video today at work because that's what I do when I'm at my day job. I sit around and watch YouTube. But um, when, so Seb's an old hand at this. You know, we all remember Mark Webber yelling multi-21 at Sebastian after I think it was uh, Malaysia when they were both at Red Bull and uh, Sebastian wouldn't follow team orders and almost ran Mark Webber off the track, I believe. So um, 
So Sebastian's perfectly okay with saying, oh, well, you got to have him get closer, you know, kind of playing these, you know, really cagey games. But as soon as Charles figures out, like, the rules for whatever game Sebastian is playing, he plays it better. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, he's, like, don't let that sweet, innocent look of Charles fool you. He he is not here to fuck around. He knows that that seat is his, and he's just waiting for old man Seb to finally die and go off and be a number one driver for, I don't know, like, Williams or some other god-awful mid-tier team. So, yeah, there we go. Some other stuff happened. Lando Norris finished, so thank God for that. That's really that's really all that I care about. Did Lando finish? Because I really like Lando. Who doesn't? He's delightful. He makes me happy. Yep. Uh, Max Verstappen finished fourth. He had to start ninth after uh, all the Honda cars got grid penalties because they got upgraded power units. So... They wanted to test them out here before they went to Japan, and they didn't want to have grid penalties in Japan. Don't want to don't want to be like, cool, well, we all qualified in the top ten. We're all going to be starting from pit lane. <laughs> Thanks. So, yeah, there we go. So, that's fun. Moving, again, I didn't watch the race, so I don't have that much insight. So, But what, speaking of races we did watch. Yes, one thing I did watch a lot sorry, of. Sorry, did I just like totally steal your thunder there? No, you didn't. Okay, good. It's perfectly fine. So, I... Speaking of things we did watch. Yeah. So, it's the NASCAR playoff season, which is a a real thing, despite how non-real it sounds. Um, this weekend, they were at the Charlotte Motor Speedway Roval, the road course oval. Yeah, I had to ask. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to pull up some highlights here so everybody can see what I'm talking about. And I did watch this. It was... Uh, I watched the last, like... 15 minutes of this with Mike. Yeah, it um, was... It was a good... It was funny. Yeah, so... I, I hate seeing this, but I enjoyed watching that 10 minutes more than I watched, enjoyed watching some F1 races. Some F1 races get... Like, they feel like a chore. So... <laughs> yeah, so at Charlotte Motor Speedway, they designed this road course because people like me complained that, hey, man, you go to road courses during the regular season... Why don't you have something in the championship, you know, in the playoffs? And so here we are at the Roval with 4,500 pounds of car that was never meant to do this, but damn it, here it is, trying its best. I also like the fact that they're racing lanes. What the fuck's a racing line? Yeah, the track limits. <laughs> yeah. What are track limits? It is it is great. And I noticed th- this occurred to me early on as I was watching it. So the Ford body is the Mustang. The Chevy body is the Camaro. Next, next year, the Toyota body is going to be the Supra. Toyota announcer is going to be a GT4 Supra. There are already GT4 Camaros and Mustangs. Ipso facto, this was a sen- next year this is going to basically be an IMSA race. <laughs> yeah, but I'd love to see our officials look at these. Oh, look at this. What's happening right now? They oh, no, would they're, lose it. They're going to lose their minds. <laughs> It's going to be hilarious, but <laughs> this is... Granted, our races aren't the cleanest things out there, but the amount of stuff that is said about the smallest things over the series radio is mind-boggling. Oh, my God. I think they could choose a better name than The Roval. <laughs> I mean, like, what a... I actually thought you mistyped <laughs> you, it the you... first time you put it in the chat. Nope. I mean, listen, you have road course and you have oval. What, is, what do you expect from these people? <laughs> this is like deep south Well, bullshit. they were they were smart enough to put these cars on it, so obviously they were smart enough to come with the name Roval, and that that's the extent. <laughs> Listen, this is weird. That poor man. <laughs> oh God, yeah. So there were some. I love NASCAR because, much like every racing series, there are very unnecessary and like harshly arbitrary penalties or arbitrarily harsh penalties. Um, late in the race, I think it was Martin Truex, uh, he cut the chicane. <laughs> and so, in, but he gave the position up. He didn't gain anything there. He didn't gave, he didn't gain anything. He actually lost a position doing it. So like, you know, most everybody would be like, all right, whatever. But he you didn't know. cover the full race distance. So here we go. You already know what they're going to do. With like three laps left, they gave him a drive through penalty. <laughs> He served it with two laps that left. Nationwide was not on that guy's side. No. 
So uh, well, he where's the up, Napa thing? Oh, it's this is like a twenty minute highlight thing. Oh. So, um, yeah, no, the uh, the nationwide car. He ended up finish. He spun. He ended up finishing second in the race, which he needed to because. <laughs> like the way the playoffs work, you have to score a certain amount of points to move on to the next round. And it's as like, what's a corner? Exactly. So I haven't seen yet this yet. This is just amazing. The, so I want to point out something. So let's go back. It's like I, a bunch I, of lemmings. <laughs> well, I, I told Mike like uh-huh. I know I'm not the world's greatest driver, but I think I could drive this better than they could. Like, geez. So I just want to try to point this out. I hope they show it. So there is a. They put a chicane. No, well, you don't really see it, but it's back there. There is a chicane on, you know, the NASCAR front straight. But for restarts, they bypass it so they don't have to take the chicane. Because, I mean, when you have effectively the mass of a dying star coming down, (laughs) you're not going to ask them to do that. You're just going to let them go straight. Watching this, I honestly wonder if half the people were just, oh, that's right, we're turning here. It is a lot of people just looking in. The break. They're looking in their mirrors, just like I don't <laughs> want to get assholed by this dude behind me. Oh shit! Suddenly, become get the, asshole by the, become yeah. the asshole. Yep. So, I mean, it is just it is the chaos. Velveeta car. It is chaos. It is hilarity, uh, and we need more of this. Is this? Oh no, man. I need to watch this whole video when I get home. Yeah, you need like this is oh amazing. this is okay. This one was the, this is great. So uh, this is Alex Bowman and somebody, and Bowman was not having it. <laughs> he just pushes him. He's so, like, "Get the f out of the way!" So apparently, oh, and then he dumps, <laughs> and then he just straight up dumps him coming out of the chicane on the back straight. Just um. dumps him, and his justification. Oh my God. Wa- and his justification was. Well, this dude has been giving me the finger all day, <laughs> and so... He really pissed me off. Bowman the Showman just straight up dumps that dude. <laughs> like, like, you ever been like you. behind like a Toyota Camry or something on the freeway, and you're just like, man, I wish I could do that. Yep. Boop. <laughs> I was just trying to stick to my line, and there he was. I like how the fucking Camaro has the, has the, the splitter guard on it. Oh, yeah. It's green. <laughs> Gotta. Uh, where's this restart Napa thing? Because that one's just gold. Oh, yeah. So, okay. So, it's going to be coming up here. So, yeah. Chase Elliott here in the in the Napa car. He, uh, well, but it was after a restart because they were all packed up. Yeah, it was on the, the stage three restart. So, yeah. For those who don't know, NASCAR it breaks up their races into stages, you know, to try to get you that excitement of, you know, an end of a race, but only a third of the way into the race, you know. It's a weird thing. So, like, if you watch any, like, uh, I can't remember, I think it's like the Hankook 24-hour series, they have, like, mandatory caution things. They call them Code 60. So, like, okay, basically. This is golden. Okay. Chase Elliott in the lead in the Napa car just takes him to Gapplebee's, and then suddenly, oh. Oh, no. This wasn't it. Damn it. Which, where is it? <laughs> There's no way. It's clean. It was... Hold on. Wait. Oh. Oh. Wait, what? It's a different... This Hold is on. a different start. Oh, yeah, there's yeah. different restart. Jason. No! <laughs> suddenly oh, man. locks up. But <laughs> where he goes, he goes into the tire barrier, bounces out, <laughs> and then continues oh, on. Oh, my God. Yup. So, it was delightful. And then his, his ending was hilarious. Yeah, so he ends up, so, you know, he has to fight his way back through the pack, and he ends up doing so. <laughs> Boop. Boop. <laughs> he just bounced back. It was delightful. I mean, well, that's like the third restart, so how many times has he gone around that corner, and then, like, that time he's like, oh, wait, there's a corner there. Oh, wait. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a lot of, you know, a lot of these guys not necessarily, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> They're just mowing the grass. There. Yeah, hold on. We gotta watch. Th- we gotta watch this. Denny Hamlin just on, like, on his own, just kind of loses it. So, yeah. yeah, here we go. There's Denny. He's coming in through the infield. And on. Uh, nope. 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 Oh, nope. Hit that clipping point. Hit some. <laughs> somebody hits him, but didn't really matter because Denny was going around. Yeah, at that point, he's committed. (laughs) 
<laughs> just steer into it. <laughs> Put it in the third and let her eat. This is everything I love and hate about four-stroke go-karting. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's just like bumper cars then. All right. Yeah, so, I mean, it's... He should have pulled just like a Van Gitten Jr. and he, drifted I mean, through the whole thing. That would have been great. So, yeah, I mean, it is just... Yeah, like, it... This was legitimately entertaining to watch because it was, like, there were, yeah, those hilarious wrecks and everything. But also, like, you really got to see who could wheel one of these unwieldy bastards around a track. Because these things weigh, like, 4,300 pounds. Like, they're not meant to do this. They were very clearly meant to go very fast around an oval. And then what, what's this, right? Yeah, what track limits, what? Yeah, no, doesn't matter. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Chase Elliott got himself a good run on Kevin Harvick. <laughs> That's all that matters. But they put big sausage curbs on some of the on some of the turns. It was hilarious to watch them hit them. <laughs> Cause they were really hitting them. Like straight up like supercar series status. Just launching them up. Have you ever seen one of those in person too? They are big. It's, yeah. It's liter it's this paper towel roll. Yeah. It's in the like, ground. Yeah, like it's I mean, it's the size of a... Like, they are mean and scary things, and I don't like them. (laughs) Yeah, so, I mean, we're just going to get to the end here, where we get a... Oh, God, yes. Danny Suarez. Oh, yeah! (laughs) Daniel Suarez. (laughs) I forgot about this. We got to figure out... I'm trying to remember what happened to poor Daniel Suarez, but he somehow... So, final lap. I think it... Oh, yeah, he got into, like, he got into the wall and then got into somebody. Well, now he can't see anything. <laughs> but it doesn't stop him. I ain't gonna stop him. You kidding me? He's Daniel Suarez. He keeps okay. going. And, and no. <laughs> but, he yeah, I mean, so hard. the leaders had already started the final lap, and Danny's just going. Just, he ain't stopping. <laughs> Back into traffic. Can't stop, won't stop. And away he goes. It's going <laughs> fast enough, it'll just, the wind will just it'll, push the hood back down. I mean, come on. I'm not gaining an advantage from this. He's somehow taking something that's already not aerodynamic and making it less so. So, I mean, yeah, it is fun to watch these things, like, be on a road course. Like, Watkins Glen is a hugely entertaining race to watch these guys on. Because, Boop. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like, it's one of those, like, you're watching somebody try to just, like, uh, it's like watching somebody in a cruise ship try to compete in a powerboat race. Like, it is hilarious. Well, he's trying. Yeah, he's exactly. Trying. And when they make it work, boy, howdy. I, I do like that they're doing stuff like this, though, because that means, like, eventually they'll actually get good at doing this in these cars if they do it enough. Yeah. Which is going to be crazy to see because, like you're saying, these cars do not handle. They're not meant for... They're not meant for this. <laughs> this is not what they're meant to but do. Like the, this is entertaining. Yeah. And then we just got to get to just gotta get to get Chase's uh, celebration here. Oh, yeah. And did they film it? Uh, no. Damn it. They're not showing us... They're not showing them burn it down. No, oh, well, whatever. So... <clears throat> Yeah, so there we go. That is that was NASCAR on a roval. The roval, yes, which uh, is hilarious. It was a good time and super entertaining. What time are we at? All right. So, and then jumping back to Formula One. All right, I remember this team being a thing. I'm not sure about. Well, you know, you, I don't know, you maybe. Back before the last major shakeup. Yeah, so uh, McLaren's used to be powered by Mercedes engines, and they were doing pretty oh, yeah. damn good. It wasn't too long ago. That was before the last major rules shakeup. Yeah. Because didn't, didn't like, Raikkonen, Raikkonen, like, win back in, like, 06 in a Mercedes or something like that? Or who was it no. won? Someone won in, like, 06... Was it, with, uh, was Reikonen it? was a little earlier. Hamilton got his first championship with that's, McLaren. Yeah, that's was, who I'm thinking of. Yeah, and, and back then, McLaren was one of the three major teams. Basically, yeah. all that happened was Mercedes put more effort into their own program, which was a mid-level team. And yep. out of nowhere, they had the success McLaren did. Yeah, and suddenly. But uh, the not necessarily the halcyon days of Mercedes-McLaren are coming back. But uh, next year, or in 2021, 
McLaren will be powered by Mercedes engines and other power unit pieces. Uh, this is not going to be a works deal, though. There will still be a works Mercedes team. This is just going to be another customer program, essentially. And the deal will last until 2024. And, yeah, there we go. So that's uh, that's going to be fun. Hopefully, hopefully McLaren continues this upward trend, because we all remember the the recent McLaren Honda days. Not great. We all we all remember. Did anybody else watch that Amazon little documentary? The the yeah, I did. Oh, it was like, like a three part series of it. Which like, yeah, three yeah. Part. Oh man, when that Honda was, was just... trying to yeah. Oh, what was that called? Because that was it was a documentary literally taken during rock bottom of yeah. McLaren man. two years ago. It was just so we bad. want Honda parts. No, <laughs> we don't. Hey Honda, we want to use your power units. Cool. Well, we need you to do this and this and this. No, 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 no. We've already built the car. Yeah. We just need you to put it in there. Oh, and you wonder why this thing is terrible? Man. Thanks, Reno, for fixing all of our woes. Oh, Reno. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Reno, for, for being there. There's a really good lesson in that, though, <laughs> That's all you can say about Reno. Man. From a motorsports politics standpoint in something that I've always had to learn is never, ever burn your bridges in racing. No, you Because can't. Alonzo with all the GP2 engine and this yeah. and that and the ranting about it basically screwed himself out of an IndyCar seat several yeah. years later. Yep. He's, I mean, that's the problem. <laughs> oh, man. That is, that is just the most delicious irony. And... <laughs> Going to a series where Honda has been dominant after he just bagged on him hard. It's like, mm, no. Oh, anyway. And then uh, we are going to potentially be losing Toro Rosso, the Red Bull Junior team. Sort of. They are applying for a name change for next year. They want to be called Alpha Tari. That's stupid. Yeah. I hate it. I like Toro Rosso. It makes perfect sense. I mean, well, I mean, the car is blue now, so... Yeah, I mean, listen. It was... I mean, they bought Minardi. They bought an Italian team. So why not just, you know, basically call them Red Bull, but Italian? <laughs> makes perfect sense to me. But who am I? I'm just a guy in a basement. You're in this basement, though. Damn right. I'm in... This illustrious basement of what have you. Um, yeah, so they are trying to be AlphaTauri, which is stupid. Red Bull's fashion label. Stupid. Yep. Uh, and this is all pending. All the other Formula One teams have to say, okay. Stupid. So. Is anything else really going to change from this, though? I haven't seen anything about this before, but. I mean, no. I think it's just gonna be you know stupid we're gonna have crofty calling them toro rosso and then apologizing and then calling them alpha tari during the during the <laughs> race broadcast and during everything else that's how it's I'm gonna the be the only one here that thinks both names are bad well, that's where you're wrong <laughs> well, well what would you call them i you know that's a good point <laughs> You call him Little Red Bull. How do you <laughs> say Red, Red Bull Junior Team in Italian? <laughs> I don't know. I, I have done enough Google Translate bullshit on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? It was it was Super Trofeo off roading, or what was it? I can't remember. But <laughs> all right, Zach, if you want to try to look up uh, Red Bull Junior Team, Red Bull Junior in Italian, Red Bull Junior Team. <laughs> Nope, no champ, damn it. <laughs> Formula 4 Italian. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, Red Bull Junior team, Formula, Formula 4. <laughs> All right, there we go. <laughs> That's close to what we're going to get. The Formula. Red Bull Formula 4 Italian. But, F1 seriously, team. though, they're, ob they're obviously a Red Bull team. Yeah. Everyone knows that. They don't need a Red Bull team type name. I mean, they could do something completely. Off the wall and out there, they should bring back Minardi. Now, Screw now they're it. just yeah, just just relabel the whole whole thing. Minardi, get rid of the yeah. the, the clothes label. Bring back retro <laughs> liveries. Yes. Oh man, 
Let's get Minardi and Arrows back out there. Google does not like this at all. Well, don't worry. Yeah, cause it's like trying to like it's trying to give me Italian web pages now that are then translated into English. Yeah, Google's not happy with this. Man. Can we get Benetton back out there? Well, I'm gonna try one more. <laughs> Bring way. back the JPS library. <laughs> library. There we go. Let's, let's dig up Lotus. See if we can make this work for more than five years. Okay. <laughs> oh God! And there we go. Okay, hold on. Uh, red. Nope. <laughs> All right. Well, what's that? Red Bull Junior. Red Bull Junior team. That's what it's it gonna be. Toro Rosso. Um. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay, here you go. Don't change the We've thing. accomplished nothing. <laughs> Red Bull Junior team. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's that's ridiculous. It, it, it didn't even. <laughs> it just said it with an Italian accent. Yeah. Red Bull Junior team, but with Italian accent. <laughs> it didn't even. <laughs> that's almost as long as Racing Point. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. This is slightly better. Squadra Junior di Red Bull. That's technically <laughs> Red Bull as one word, junior team. Which it, Red Bull's two words. <laughs> well, I was trying it with more than one way, okay? That's how you use the internet. It's just Red Bull junior team, but more of this. More the more the four fingers on the thumb thing. <laughs> That's where emoticons come in. Yup. Man. Oh, uh, we just need some more patrons and we can start live streaming this thing. Yeah, because no one knows what we were. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yes, more the, of this, the guys. The Italian hand. Yeah. More of this. Yes. Yes, yeah. the Italian hand. Perfect. It's a spicy meatball. Yes. <laughs> oh, so is this is how you. <laughs> Perfect. Squadra. Squadra. Yep. Squadra Junior. There's our team name. Squadra Done. Junior, which isn't even Red Bull. Because. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, well, case in point, this isn't the worst name it could have. Oh, yeah, so hurry, Very is. true. Furistrada. <laughs> oh, that is a callback. Call and on that note... Because it, it came up in my history of translated items. Man, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us on episode 231. We hope you learned something. I didn't. You can't blame us if you didn't, because we're not educational. We're just here. We're doing stuff. I tried we're not trying to teach you anything. We're just bringing you news. It's not our fault if you're not paying attention hey, or we make it hard to understand. But did you learn that uh, Aston Martins had Volvo engines? Oh, not I, Ford engines? I mean, <laughs> I've known that for a while. Well, we may have taught somebody something. Yeah, there we go. That was new to me. There you go. Congratulations. There we go. Yay. We taught Ayrton. Woo! Done and done. Success. Uh, we will be back on Thursday, Wednesday, if you're a patron. Just remember that. We're at that $5 level or higher get these things a day early uh yes we'll be back on thursday where we're going to talk more to ben and Ayrton about things including you know karting racing classic car ownership and what could possibly kill the grimace so want to know what the hell we're talking about listen on thursday give us five bucks and you know get it a day early Go ahead and uh support us on patreon patreon.com slash cam auto mag you guys are like amazon yeah. You pay an extra five bucks, get it a day earlier. Damn right. That's how it works, baby. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, support us there. Uh, support us by buying our stuff at camautoswag.com. Follow us on all the social medias. We are at camautomag on all of them. Uh, if you're just stumbling across this podcast, congratulations. We are available on all the popular podcast platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play. Like, rate, review, subscribe. Support our sponsor, Steady Broke Clothing, steadybroke.com. Use coupon code CAMAUTO15 <laughs> at checkout to save 15% on your it. entire order. 15% less broke. Damn right, 15% more ramen. I'm turning our outro <laughs> into a wrap. Oh. <laughs> You're just having a party we can't see. That's just, that's just wonderful. All right, for episode 231, I have been Mike. I've been Zach. I've been Ben. Air 10. There we go. We did Perfect. A thing. We did it. Yay.